Hi, I'm Gina. Today, I'm going to be walking you through how to use AIP Logic Control Flow loop functionality, but specifically for ontology edits. So what this allows you to do is take a list, and then for every element of the list, you're able to apply some sort of ontology edit. Before we get started, a quick word from our founder. Discover how Pounds Your Customers unlock more value from Foundry and AIP thanks to our live instructor-led trainings. We are Ontologize, a group of former Palantir engineers who love teaching. We've trained thousands of Palantir users at leading organizations around the world. Unlock the full potential of your Palantir deployment by going to ontologize.com. By the end of this exercise, you will have built something similar to what we're about to see. So in this function in AIP logic, we're taking in some sort of array, and it's going to be an array of strings. We're converting the array to a literal list, and then we're using the loop control flow functionality in order to do something for every element in the list. And so what we're doing here is for every element of the list, we're creating an instance of the animal object type, where the animal type is the value in that specific index of the array. So here you'll see on the side where I'm previewing the run, the inputs of my array are cat, mouse, and dog. And now every time I run this, for each element of the array, it's going to execute this create animals action type. And so here you'll see that the animal type is being set to the element, which represents the element that we're on during that iteration. Now, when I hit preview run, You'll see here that we have not one, but three proposed ontology edits. So for every element in the array, we have created an instance of the animal object type. So a cat, a dog, and a mouse. And so that is what we're going to be building. Now let's get to it. Starting from anywhere in Foundry, the first thing that we're going to need to do is make an object type. Now, the reason that we're gonna do that is so that we're all starting from a common ground here and so that we can create an action type to execute during every iteration of this loop. So from here, or from wherever you are in Foundry, you're gonna hit Control J, and you're going to search for Ontology Manager. Now you're gonna click on it. Now, once you're in Ontology Manager, you're gonna to go to New, make a new object type. And now in this case, we're going to be continuing without a data source. And so all instances of this object type are going to be created via user edits or by actions. So we're gonna hit continue without data source, and now we're gonna select the location. So you're gonna select folder. And of course, every object type is going to have a backing data set, even if it's just for permissions. And so here, the file name, you're probably gonna to wanna to prefix it with your name in case other people on your stack are doing the same exercise. And we're gonna call this animals. Now hit browse. and go to all projects and locate your personal project and hit save. You're gonna see that green toast. And now you're gonna hit next. You can add a different icon here if you like, add a smiley face, and of course change the color. And the object name should be something like your name in brackets and animal. And now we're gonna hit next. Now, the only property that we're guaranteed to have right now is the primary key, because we have to have a primary key. But let's add one more property, which is the animal type. So that's the type. And the title key, I'll make that the animal type. Now I'm going to hit next. And here, we're going to auto-generate action types based on this object type. So we have create, modify, and delete. And now we're going to hit create and then save, and then save to ontology and save changes. Now note that before you do this exercise and before you create your AIP logic function that interacts with this object type, you're going to have to wait for the object type to finish indexing. And so the way you can check up on the status of that is first of all, you can tell that it's still indexing because you'll see this spinning motion here. And if you go to data sources, you'll see here that the live pipeline is not finished yet. So we're gonna hang tight and wait until we have all green check marks here. Now in the meantime, let's go investigate our action types. If we go to overview, 
you'll see here on the object overview that we're going to have three action types. Now let's specifically look at create animal. So click on it. And you'll see here that what this action type does is it builds out the type property and it populates the primary key with a random unique identifier. Now in the parameters of the action, you'll see that it only takes in the type. So we're keeping it really straightforward here. That is the only property that's going to be filled out when a user executes this action. So now we're gonna head back to the object homepage and hang tight while this finishes indexing. And now our index process is complete. And we know that because there's no more spinning here. And if we go to data services, you'll see that all we have is green checks marks here, which means we are ready to go. Now from here, we're gonna move on into AIP logic. Now from here or from wherever you are in Foundry now, you're gonna hit control J and search for AIP logic. Now you're gonna click on AIP logic. And now from here, you're gonna hit new logic. And you're gonna call this your name loop example. And now you're gonna save it in your project. So you're gonna to go to browse, go to the root to all projects and save it in your learning project and hit save. Now, here we are in AIP logic. So in this example, we're going to be focusing on control flow here, of course, which is where we take a list and then for every element in the list, we take it and transform it or apply ontology edits. Now, in order to do this, we're gonna need to start with some sort of input that is gonna have multiple elements, like an array. And so from here, we're gonna hit add function inputs. And now the input here, we're gonna call this array of animal types, right? And so there we have our variable name. And now for the variable type, we're gonna make this an array. And it's going to be an array of strings. Now note that the input type here does not have to be an array. You just have to have something at the end that you can turn into a list so that we can loop through it. And an array is a great candidate for that. So that's our one and only input. And now we're gonna go straight into configuring our control flow. So here, control flow actually has two options. So there is conditional and there is loop. And so we're gonna be focusing on loop for now. So we're gonna click on loop. And now here we have to select a variable to loop through. Now here, when I select variable and select array of animal types, you'll see here that it takes that array and turns it into a literal list. And so here, if we focus on just that block, let's run just that block to see what it does. So if I hit toggle only running this block, and I added a sample array, so let's try cat, mouse, dog, and then hit run block. You'll see that it takes that array and returns a literal list. Now we're going to be using that literal list and looping through it. So in order to continue here, make sure you hit remove. And so now that gets us out of the mode where we're only running one block. So here, when we set the elements to array of animal types, it automatically set that to the transformed array, which has been transformed to a literal list. And now we're looping through something called array to literal list. Now let's rename this just to have it make more sense. So we can rename this to list of animal types, just to make things a little more intuitive. So now we're looping through same thing. It's just now called list of animal types. So now the question is, are we doing something for each element or for each index? Now, in this case, we're going to say for each element. So we're gonna click on element. And here we have the opportunity to click on those and rename them. So for readability here, I could rename this to animal type. Now, you'll notice here, it's almost like we have a mini AAP logic function within this loop. And so here we can do a series of different things, but for now we're gonna keep it simple and just execute an action. But note here that you have all the normal options that you'd expect to have. 
like an LLM or a semantic search, or another control flow, or different ontology operations, or of course, the normal data manipulation options that you expect to have in AIP logic. Now, here, you're gonna search for your action type that you just created, and it's probably called something like create your name animal. There we go, so create Gina animal. And now the type here, so remember, the only parameter our action type takes in here is the animal type. And so here, for the type of the animal, it's going to be whatever element of the array we're on in that iteration. And so here it's gonna be animal type, which is right here. So we're doing that for each animal type for each item in the list. So now let's try this out. So for the array, I'm just gonna do an array of different animals. Let's say cat, a fish, and a bat. And now I'm gonna hit preview run. All right, and so now we can see these proposed ontology edits. Now note that when you actually develop on your AIP logic function, the edits are not actually applied when you're iterating or when you're testing this out. But here we can get a preview of what happened. So we made three objects, cat, bat, and fish, and their associated primary keys. Now, we're not totally done here yet because right now our function doesn't actually do anything. And so in order to be truly finished here, we actually have to do a little bit more work. So in order to do that, we're gonna hit save and publish. And now when we publish an AIP logic function, we have to bind it to a specific ontology. And so here, we're gonna be publishing it to specifically the ontologized public ontology, publish to whatever ontology you can. And so we have the name, the API name, and now we're gonna hit publish. So up next, in order to actually make this function useful, we're gonna wrap it in an action. And so here, we're gonna hit create action. And so you'll see here, it's gonna take us straight to the action configuration. And instead of our normal object action, this action is going to run a function. And so you can see here, it's running the Gina loop example function. And it only has one input, which is an array of animal types. So now I'm gonna hit next. And I'm going to call this something like Gina loop demo animal creator. And now I'm gonna hit next. The permissions will be for everybody in the organization. And then I'm gonna hit create. Now, there's not really a lot of configuration we need here. If we take a look at the preview form, you'll see that the form already knows to expect an array and it's built that way. So now we're gonna hit save and save to ontology and then save changes. Now that we've created this action type, let's go take it for a spin and workshop. So from here, you're gonna hit control J and you're gonna search for workshop. Now we're gonna click on workshop, open it up in a new tab. And now from here, we're gonna hit new module I'm gonna call this one demo loop AIP logic action. All right, and now you're gonna hit save. And so here, again, the only purpose of this workshop is just to demonstrate this action. So we're gonna get rid of this other section. We don't really need it. Now get rid of where it says section here, and we're just gonna put a button. So with a plus sign, it's gonna be a button group. And we're gonna call this one, add animals. On click, it's gonna be an action. That action is going to be, you're just gonna search for loop. So Gina loop demo animal creator. And now you'll see when I click my button, it pulls up our form. Now, let's add one last thing here. We're just gonna add a little object list to display the animals. So here, we're gonna hit add widget, and we're gonna add in an object table. And the object set that we're gonna display here, we're gonna hit new object set variable, and it's gonna be animals. And the starting object set is gonna be Gina animal. Now, of course, it's blank. We have no animals here yet. So now we're gonna add in the animals. So we're gonna hit add animals. It's gonna be an array here. 
So we can also paste in a list of values. So dog, cat, mouse, fish. And now we're going to hit submit. All right, and now we can see that that created four animals at once. And now we verify that our action works as expected, and this concludes this tutorial. Don't forget to save your work. Thanks for watching. We hope you found this helpful. Let us know what you want to see next in the comments.